Yo, what's up guys? This is Don, and in this tutorial I'm gonna be showing you uh, the best HD render settings for Cinema 4D. So these are the settings for YouTube 720p, and um, you know, I think this will give you uh, the best quality, uh, the smallest file sizes, so manageable file sizes, and uh, also the um, fastest rendering time. Um, I wouldn't go as to say these are probably the best settings. Uh, these are just the settings which I use on my YouTube and uh, they seem to be fine for me. Uh, so if you guys like the quality of my intros and would like to know how I do that, then uh, this is the tutorial, okay? Uh, so I've just set up a really basic scene here and uh, it's just some um, simple 3D text in HD. And uh, if I play this, the camera just goes around like that. And uh, that's what I'm going to be uh, rendering out. Um, so uh, to render out something, you want to go to uh, this icon here. And uh, go to the first tab, which is called General. And make sure that full render is selected. And uh, you want to go to Output. And uh, put the width and the height uh, to 1280 by 720. And uh, you want to go to the frame range here. Leave everything else as it is and just go down to the frame range. Uh, and now this is entirely up to you. You can have current frame which is uh, used for when um, making images. So whatever frame you are on in the timeline down here is uh, whatever frame is going to be rendered out. Uh, but if you want to render out an animation or an intro, then uh, you want to go to either all frames uh, which will basically render out every single thing or you can go on a um, manual uh, where you can select where you want to render out. So um, maybe I'm going to go from 10 to um, 80. So from 10 to 80, I'm going to render that out. Uh, so the frame range is up to you. And uh, you want to go to the save tab. And uh, this is really important now. Um, uh, most people think that AVI is probably the best uh, format to save in. and um, it might be the best, but I personally disagree. I think that uh, QuickTime Movie is the best, but most people don't have their QuickTime codex, and um, you know, end up rendering an AVI movie. And um, the problem with AVI, I find, is that the files are too large, and um, you know, the quality for me, I actually don't think it's as good. But you guys uh, may think it's the same or whatever. But this is just my personal view. Uh, so if I were you, I would recommend uh, that you use QuickTime Movie. And uh, now the reason why most people don't use QuickTime Movie is uh, simply because they don't have the right codex. So to get the codex for QuickTime Movie, just simply go to um, iTunes.com and uh, download QuickTime. I will also put the link in the description below so you can download that. Uh, it's free to install and um, it gives you the QuickTime codec. Um, uh, and also, you know, if you want to then take your 3D animation into maybe After Effects uh, or Sony Vegas, um, you may have problems with um, compatibility with the QuickTime movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way around that is to um, go to the download link in the description below. There are two links. There's one for 32-bit and there's one for 64-bit. And uh, you want to download the codec pack. Uh, it's called the K-Lite codec pack. And uh, basically, it will install every single known video codec to your computer. And um, that might help. Most of the time, it will help you. But some people still have problems. And, um, you know, there's nothing I, I, I know how, I don't know how to fix that. So hopefully, it should work for you. Um, but if it doesn't, then uh, just go to um, AVI Movie and go to Options. And then just choose an IYUV codec and then uh, click OK. And uh, you also want to specify a save path and then uh, click on there and uh, just type it in uh, whatever you want to save as. So maybe I want to save as um, YouTube HD. Um, and uh, yeah, you just, uh, you know, if I have to run this now, I'll just hit the button and uh, it would uh, render out. Uh, but I don't want to render out in uh, uh, AVI, so I'm just going to change mine to quick time again. And uh, you want to go to the Options tab here, and uh, don't use Ray Depth or, sorry, uh, you want to change those values to 6, 2, and 6. 
and uh, that basically speeds up your rendering and um, now you just hit the render button and uh, you're good to go so those are the best HD render settings uh, in my opinion and uh, they work great for me and uh, you guys should have no problems and uh, just remember if you have problems with the QuickTime codec then uh, use the AVI codec um, it's slightly less quality but uh, you know if you have no option then um, you just have to stick to what you've got uh, but thank you for watching this tutorial uh, I hope you guys found it helpful uh, please comment below with any questions and me or other users will um, reply to your questions uh, so yeah peace out okay guys just a little something uh, I forgot is um, you know most of you are probably wondering well do I have to do this process every single time I uh, open up Cinema 4D and uh, the answer is no you don't um, all you simply do is uh, you know go back on your render settings and uh, right click the rendering settings icon here uh, the word render setting right click it and then you want to click save preset and then just type in the name of your preset here so if I save mine as a HD YouTube and uh, just click OK uh, you know the next time you're going to Cinema 4D so if you just uh, create a new uh, project real quick uh, you just need to go to your render setting icon again and uh, right click that name again and then go to load preset and uh, it's gonna load up your uh, HD YouTube one and uh, you will notice that nothing actually happened to the frame size in here but if I go back on it and click the little uh, black uh, thing here to turn it white uh, you will see now that it's in the right um, uh, resolution and uh, frame size uh, so that's it. You don't have to repeat the process every single time you go into um, Cinema 4D. Uh, you only have to do it once. Uh, but also just keep in mind that um, the save path will stay the same. So make sure you change this each time you save a new project. Uh, or else you're going to overwrite every other single project you have uh, created. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Peace out.